Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Geography 341, Weather and Society. Uh, today's lecture is going to focus on atmospheric structure. I'm Dr. Zach Hilgendorf, your uh, resident lecturer for the semester. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So here is our big blue marble that we call home. Uh, I can almost see Eau Claire from here. Uh, but this lecture is going to focus on how the atmosphere is structured from uh, where we live, to much, much higher above our heads, and some of the typical characteristics that you see within each of those layers of the atmosphere. So to start, Earth is a pretty big place. Uh, if we look at the radius of Earth, we got about 6,370 kilometers. If you look at the very edge, that thin veneer is our atmosphere. Then you ask yourself, what is the atmosphere? Well, it is a thin envelope of air surrounding Earth, which is held to Earth by gravity along with small suspended particulates or particles. And looking at the layers of the atmosphere, we're going to notice a few things. We've got four that we're going to really focus on here. And the first one is probably the one that's most important to us. It's where we live. It's the troposphere. The troposphere is the lowest layer of the atmosphere. It's where we live. It's where Basically, all weather occurs. Uh, it goes from Earth's surface to roughly 12 kilometers in altitude above the surface of the planet. Depth varies with space and time. Um, it can be 8 kilometers deep at the poles. It can be 16 kilometers deep at the equator. Um, so you typically see this kind of bulging there uh, around the equator and the depth of the troposphere. It contains... 80% of the mass of the atmosphere uh, and 99% of all the water vapor and aerosols within our atmosphere. Temperature generally decreases with altitude to around negative 60 degrees Celsius at the top of the troposphere. It is a layer within the atmosphere that is inherently unstable. That means there is strong vertical motion within air parcels going on within the troposphere. There's a lot of mixing of air within the troposphere is, is another way to think of that. So because things like hot air rise it, and cold air descends, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later on, but that rising air and uh, warm air and descending cold air is mixing. There are updrafts and downdrafts. Uh, there is turbulence. Probably experienced that on a plane once or twice. Um, and our jet stream is located in the upper troposphere. Above that, we're capped by something called the tropopause. That's a region of increasing temperature, an isothermal layer. It acts as a lid preventing air exchange between the troposphere and the stratosphere, our next layer. But within the troposphere is one more important thing that we need to consider, we need to think about. And because of how wind moves across our planet, we have something called the planetary boundary layer. So this is a sublayer within our troposphere, from the surface to a little bit above. Uh, this is the region within our atmosphere, within the troposphere, that experiences the direct effect of friction at the surface. It is dominated by turbulent motion uh, and the surface exchange processes, heat, moisture, and momentum. It exhibits large diurnal changes, day-to-day -day changes. So throughout the day, when the surface is cool, you're not getting those updrafts. But as you're warming, that hot air is rising and you're getting substantial turbulent mixing going on. The depth varies from tens of meters in very stable conditions to two kilometers over tropical oceans. Uh, temperature decreases with altitude, uh, and it's usually capped by a temperature inversion uh, that inhibits mixing with the air in the free troposphere above the planetary boundary layer. Um, so you can see here, uh, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about this once we get to our wind sections, um, but notice here, See my arrow off on the side here. Uh, that is a wind speed profile. So winds are much slower at the surface because all the things on the surface are impeding them. 
trees, buildings, rocks, mountains, etc. If it's protruding off the surface of our planet, it is impacting, slowing, and reducing wind speeds. So it takes a while uh, for those wind speeds to kick back up again, and it actually happens and functions on a logarithmic pers uh, aspect, you can see here. Um, so and we've got our shear layer up at the top. We're not really going to dive into the nuances of uh, fluid dynamics. Um, we could, if anyone is interested, but um, that's not something we're going to focus necessarily on in the course. Just know that at the lower uh, levels of the troposphere and within the planetary boundary layer, winds are impeded much more effectively than up towards the top of the planetary boundary layer where you get to the free stream velocity. So basically unimpeded wind velocities, the geostrophic winds that you see above our shear layer here. Um, so depth of the atmospheric boundary layer, you can see that here, roughly one and a half to five kilometers or so. Uh, to the top of the atmospheric boundary layer. Getting into the stratosphere, that's our next uh, sphere. So that's above the troposphere and the tropopause. This is the second lowest layer that extends from the top of the troposphere to about 50 kilometers. Uh, this is our ozone or O3, oxygen three layer. Uh, peak concentrations of ozone within the stratosphere are right around uh, between 20 and 30 kilometers of altitude. Now, this is incredibly important because ozone absorbs most of the damaging ultraviolet sunlight or UVB radiation that is in, uh, encountered by our planet. Heated by, uh, it's heated, this entire layer is heated by ozone absorption of UV radiation. So temps will increase with altitude here. There is weak vertical motion. That means there's not lots of uh, upwelling and updrafts occurring within the stratosphere here. Uh, seasonally variable temperatures, generally warmer in the summer, uh, with lowest temperatures at, uh, around the equatorial tropopause, much more complex and varied during the winter. Uh, the stratosphere is nearly cloud and weather free, not ultimately, but nearly cloud and weather free. Uh, and interaction with the troposphere is very limited because of things like the tropopause that's capping the exchange of, uh, or preventing the exchange of, of wind from one layer to the next. Uh, but we're, it's a very poorly understood phenomena, uh, that interaction. So, Next, we move into the mesosphere. Uh, it extends from about 50 or so to 85 or so kilometers uh, in altitude. It is heated by solar radiation at the base. Heat is dispersed upward by vertical motion. Uh, so you get progressively colder with altitude. The top of this layer is the coldest place within the Earth system, negative 85 degrees Celsius on average. Uh, very sca scarce in water vapor, so the highest clouds here are noctilucent, noctilucent pardon me, clouds exist here. Um, those are tough to see, and there's not much that happens regarding us and uh, noctilucent clouds. So. Uh, and another fun fact, most of our meteors that are entering the Earth atmospheric system burn up within the mesosphere. And finally, the last one we're going to talk about is the thermosphere. Uh, this extends from, you could say, 85 kilometers to 700 kilometers. There is no top to the atmosphere. It's kind of a diffuse boundary. There's no real top. That's, you don't go to 701 kilometers and you're in outer space. That's not how it works. Um, but in the thermosphere, temperature increases with altitude due to, uh, but due to very low molecular density, um, this is incredibly affected by solar activity. Uh, hence the wide variability in temperatures within the thermosphere. It is cloud and water vapor free. Uh, sometimes you'll see the aurora borealis or the aurora australis are sometimes seen within uh, the thermosphere. And the International Space Station orbits within the thermosphere. So just to give you some context of where we're at. So looking at air pressure in the atmosphere, the next, uh, the second half of our lecture here. So starting out, it is important to note that the density of molecules decrease with height, meaning that there are fewer molecules, though the same composition of molecules higher up in the atmosphere than there would be lower in the atmosphere. 
for example, that's why it's more difficult to breathe because when you're inhaling, you're not getting as much oxygen at altitude as you would be at ground level. Half of our atmospheric density is below five and a half kilometers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more in the next slide and subsequent slides about uh, standard density and pressure within the atmosphere, uh, within our troposphere here. Um, but half of it, half of the atmospheric density is below 5.5 kilometers. If you think of the weight of the atmosphere pressing down, over half of that is only five and a half kilometers above our surface. Uh, and air pressure, as I mentioned this in the, I think the definitions lecture, always converted to sea level pressure to standardize measurements and description of measurements across our planet. So moving into atmospheric density. Um, so density decreases with height, as I just mentioned. Uh, if we look at density at sea level, it is at about 1.225 kilograms per meter cubed. If you go up a little bit, density at 10 kilometers in altitude is about four or 0.413 uh, kilograms per meter cubed. And density at 20 kilometers is only 0 0.088 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, so that gives you an idea of how density changes across the planet, but we need to understand some of the, the relationships there. So one of the ways we do that, so because air is an ideal gas and because pressure, density, and temperature are related by the ideal gas law, we can use that to determine things like pressure, for example. So here in this equation, pressure, or P, uh, in newtons per meter squared, is equal to R, which is our density, measured in kilograms per cubic meter, multiplied by the gas constant, or 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, times temperature, in Kelvin again. So that's one way that we can figure out pressure. Now, pressure is very dependent on local conditions. Um, so our next formula we're going to talk about, the barometric formula, exists and is effective only within our troposphere. So uh, hit that in the next slide. This is another important one, our barometric pressure formula. So this is within the troposphere itself um, because pressure changes, density changes as we go um, in different quantities and different uh, layers of the atmosphere. This is only applicable to the troposphere. Uh, so somewhere below about 44 meter, or 44 kilometers or so, or 44,000 meters is where we can use these equations. Um, local weather and climate effect uh, effects can also affect the exact barometric pressure at a given point, but this gives you a good idea. Um, so here, atmospheric pressure at altitude in pascals is equal to uh, P naught, so that, that zero we often refer to as naught, um, in these types of equations. So P naught is equal to uh, the pressure at sea level. Um, L is the temperature lapse rate, so how that's changing with height. Uh, so 0 0.0065 kelvins per meter. Altitude is H in meters. Uh, standard temperature is at sea level is 288.15 kelvin. G is our Earth's gravitational acceleration, 9.81 meters per second squared. M is the molar mass of dry air, so 0.289644 kilograms per mole. And then R is our universal gas constant. Uh, it's a constant, so it's always going to be that, but 8.31447 joules per molar Kelvin. We can do this a little bit easier. <laughs> um, we don't have to necessarily worry about being able to calculate all of that. We can look at a chart like this, and these are relationships that have been developed for pressure and altitude. So from sea level to one kilometer, we can go from 1,013.25 millibars to uh, 899 millibars. So if we divide that by 1,000, so the rate we've risen uh, in altitude, that gives us a change of 1.14 millibars for every 10 meters. That's different uh, because of how pressure changes with altitude. Then if you were to go the same distance from 10 kilometers to 11 kilometers, notice that that change is only 0.38 millibars for every 10 meters. So 
you're decreasing more slowly in pressure because that density is so much less once you get into altitude than if you were at sea level, for example. So the pressure at sea level we've talked about before, that is 1,013.25 millibars. Uh, so that's at 100% of Earth's atmosphere. That also relates to 101,325 newtons per meter squared or pascals or 1,013.25 or millibars or hectopascals. If we move up a little bit, we go to 53% of our atmosphere, about five kilometers or so. What's our pressure gonna be here? Well, if we look back at our charts and we do some calculations, about 540 millibars. Move up a little bit further, 10 kilometers, that decreases to about 264 millibars. And then finally, uh, at about 12% of our atmosphere is at about 15 kilometers. If you remember, about 80% of uh, the mass of the atmosphere is contained within the troposphere, uh, which goes all the way up to about 50 kilometers above our uh, heads. Here at 12% atmosphere, we have about 120 millibars uh, as our pressure. And then all the way up at 20 kilometers here, about 55 millibars. So a quick recap, uh, layers of the atmosphere, we talked about the troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, and thermosphere. Uh, with air density and pressure, we talked about the ideal gas law barometric formula for the troposphere and understanding how density and pressure change with altitude. So. That's all for this one. Uh, I will see you in the next video. We're gonna continue talking about uh, energy and the atmosphere. So we will see you then. Have a good day.